It's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So today I'm going to do an extended video on uh, two things uh, and their transits. One is on the Jupiter conjunction with Pluto, which will happen three times uh, in 2020. And then I'll end this video with Jupiter then going on to conjunct Saturn um, at zero degrees and some minutes of Aquarius. And I will cover um, all the signs in this uh, video as well. Um, I'll mainly be looking at the ascendant that's in your sign and of course I'll be using the whole house system um, when I look at your charts. So get your own chart out and find out the degree points we're looking at is anywhere between 22 degrees and 25 degrees of Capricorn. That's the real pivot point um, for the Jupiter uh, Pluto conjunction and then for the Jupiter Saturn conjunction we want to look at zero to one degree of Aquarius so those are two uh, two different transits and different degree points that are important in your chart so when we look at this Jupiter Pluto conjunction we start off really on the 4th of April I'm making this video at the end of March 2020 so this is coming up pretty soon and the degrees are 24 degrees, 53 minutes of Capricorn at about 7 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So when we look at the moon, the moon is, is very much the mood of the people. And that is at 3 degrees of Virgo, suggesting what is going on right now, uh, which of course is this cleanliness um, and purity uh, and keeping everything clean around us is very important. So astrology is just reflecting what's going on right now. We have Chiron that's going direct. This is a positive thing because this obviously brings in good things for us with regards to healing. We also have Saturn that's direct at zero degrees of Aquarius. Um, and then we have a conjunction of, uh, continues with both Mercury and Neptune. So to me, this says that's in, in Pisces. So the only thing about this is certainly it'll bring news to us and things like that with regards to this virus. Um, but it can also suggest that there might be some things being hidden and not being brought to the surface. And of course, this may actually come back to us at a much later time as this whole uh, Jupiter Pluto conjunction evolves because it is a process, this actual conjunction of Jupiter and Pluto throughout 2020. So that's what I think that says. We have the Sun at 15 degrees of Aries. Again, a lot of forward motion and pioneering ways of doing things. I'm not saying much more than what's going on anyway. The second conjunction of Jupiter Pluto is on the 30th of June, and that's at 24 degrees Capricorn, 6 minutes at 12 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Now here we have something slightly different, and that's what I was talking about, there's different hallmarks for each of these conjunction periods. For this one we have both Jupiter and Pluto are retrograde, and we have two eclipses in June. One on the 5th, which is a full moon at 15 degrees of Sagittarius, and then a new moon on the 21st of June um, at zero degrees of Cancer. So this really has us... Um, Really, the, the Pluto and Jupiter uh, retrograde certainly has a lot of internal things going on for us collectively as well as um, individually. The Moon is at 5 degrees of Scorpio, and that quincunx is um, a now direct Venus. Because don't forget, Venus was a retrograde prior to this. At 5 degrees of Gemini. Um, this, I think, may refer to the markets. When we look at Scorpio, we're looking at certainly money uh, and power. Um, but the quincunx with Venus says, mm, there's got to be some adjustments. adjustments. I actually see this as a positive thing. I think this may be the time period right around the end of June that we see that adjustment happening uh, in the money markets. Um, I think that's what's going to be going on here. Now we have the Sun at 8 degrees of Cancer. And the north nodes now on the 30th of June are now at 29 degrees of Gemini. So now they've, the, our whole collective destiny is moved up into a much more intellectual air sign. Let's collect the facts, ma'am. A type of energy. 
We have this Mercury uh, retrograde at 10 degrees of uh, Cancer. It will be conjuncting the Sun on the 1st of July. I see this end of June, beginning of July, as a big turning point with regards to uh, true enlightening information about our safety, our security, uh, and our homeland. This is going to be a turning point. And I think if you listen to the news, this astrology that I'm giving you is not new news, uh, but it's interesting how the astrology is kind of reflecting what potentially may actually happen towards the end of June. When we look at these two eclipses, I'll talk about them in more detail, but really when we're looking at Sagittarius, we're looking at taking the high road, our future, uh, the law, uh, the laws that are in effect, as well as with the Cancer at the end of the month of June, we're looking at, at zero degrees. This is also a kind of a, a turning point as well as a tidy up of the eclipses in Cancer. And being at zero degrees, it's been a new initiation. So there may be uh, some a new initiation with regards to um, how we protect ourselves, secure ourselves, um, and nurture ourselves. So this can be going on at an individual level. Level, you know, after we've gone through a number of months. So I'm talking about end of June. We've gone through a couple months by this time, being uh, with our significant others, family members, etc. And we may be reviewing, um, in many ways, positively and negatively. Uh, both our actions within our family as well as our family's actions to us. So there may be a lot of things that are reviewed at this point individually with regards to our own nurturing itself and then where we're going to go with this individually. So the last conjunction is on the 12th of November and that is at 22 degrees of Capricorn 51 minutes and it's actually at 12 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So here we have Saturn, and it is going direct now, uh, at 26 degrees of Capricorn 56 minutes. So it was last here at that degree point around mid-February. So I see this as us catching up to whatever was happening at that point. And if we look at what was happening at that point, of course, it was when the real trigger point happened where we realized the gravity of what was going on with the uh, the virus around the world and the USA. And so this is some, um, I would say, ending point. Saturn is where you stop, right? It's the, the boundaries, the walls. And so I think we're going to see some major thing happen at this point too. Um, perhaps we'll have some um, something akin to a um, something that can stop the virus, that actually works to contain it, that may be happening around this time, something that's more concrete, like a vaccine. We have at this point the moon, which again we'll talk about the collective right, the collective feeling of what's out there, is at 17 degrees of Libra. And it quincunxes Neptune, but it opposes Mars, which is retrograde. We have Venus that's also um, in Libra at 19 degrees. So we have both the Moon and Venus uh, in Libra. Um, and I see this as a balance for sure in our money markets. We also have Mercury direct at two degrees of Scorpio. Scorpio again bringing in that money thing. We also have the Sun at 20 degrees of Scorpio supporting that whole money thing. And it is sextiling both this Jupiter uh, and Pluto, which is significant. So this 12th of November will certainly mark um, a time period where our monies will probably sh actually show a concrete turnaround, but it may also have us looking at, you know, how we're interacting uh, with the people that we are with and whether or not that's balanced. So that's that whole Libra effect. Uh, of both the Moon and uh, Venus being there. So it's us balancing things out. Am I doing too much? Am I doing too little? Are they doing too much? Are they doing too little? And so these will be brought more to the forefront here. Um, but Scorpio is a, a sign that does not mess around. So I would say there's going to be some concrete action taken here and uh, it'll be positive. We have the North Nodes uh, at 20 degrees of Gemini. And we have the Mars retrograde, which is at 15 degrees of Aries. 
Um, we have Chiron that is um, retrograde at this point, as well as Neptune. And we also have Uranus uh, retrograde as well. I'm not going to go into a lot of what that is, but know that there's still some of the things behind the scenes that quite haven't quite come out yet. And that Neptune, I would say, probably pertains more to the virus. Um, so we still need something else to come out to give us information that's important for us. Generally speaking, this is a good movement forward for us, especially as it applies to the virus as well as to our money system. That it, it, it all really speaks to me about the money, for sure, for sure. Now, we have um, a Mercury that's going to go retrograde in Gemini on the 29th of May, 2021, at uh, 24 degrees of Gemini. And it'll go direct at 16 degrees of Gemini. So because we've got these north nodes in here, this is just kind of an aside, the north nodes are now in Gemini. I would say that retrograde period is going to have a lot to do with our destiny. So that's really looking at a year from now, just about, uh, with regards to us having to change the way we think about things. And this will be through factual things that we were, give, we were given. I can go back to that and uh, certainly talk more about that, that later. Let's get into really what what Pluto is, what Jupiter is, and what the influence of these two planets are with regards to these three conjunctions that will be happening throughout 2020. When we're looking at Jupiter, this is where we grow. And it's also where we reach for our higher selves to make meaning of life. Um, it meets up with Pluto. Pluto really speaks to our soul, especially if you're you're um, subscribing to evolutionary uh, astrology, but it also talks about our shadow side. And what it says with this Pluto is that we are supposed to be transforming that shadow side, transforming our soul. Now, I think most of us have at least heard of the phrase, dark night of the soul. So that kind of is the general idea here although I'm not talking about doom and gloom, it's just saying that those things are there and this time period uh, that is very rare, but I think it was something like the 1700s this happened last, when we add Jupiter to that, which is saying where we're supposed to grow and that it amplifies everything to the Pluto, this is taking lead and transforming it into gold. Hence my shimmering <laughs> little top here trying to uh, live what I'm saying. Um, and it's magic. So these, these are going to be difficult times because going through that um, time where you actually have to look at the shadow of yourself and bring it to a higher level, polishing the mirror if you're a Buddhist, uh, looking at the meaning of life and starting to apply that to our inner soul and transform it into gold, uh, can sometimes be difficult. It's not always an easy process. But remember, there's magic behind that. So we see in the collective that many souls, speaking of Pluto, are being transformed. Some to go to a higher level, some to go to a completely different world. Others are leveling up their souls during this time period to a higher level of being. So you want to be vibrating at a higher level. That's the intention as I see it for this uh, transit of Jupiter and Pluto. So Jupiter is vibrating at a high level after it leaves Pluto and then goes on to meet Saturn. Saturn says it's time to make this real and in Aquarius it's making it real and setting up a higher standard for all of us. Now we're all going to be at different levels, right? Um, being in Aquarius, the first thing I thought of, perhaps this truly is the start of the age of Aquarius, which of course is that altruistic, higher level of where we're all living together, respecting each other, um, and connecting with the universe, uh, God, um, source, or higher, higher levels of being 
So we want to be vibrating at a higher level of being. And all the activities, as I see it, that have been going on around this world, that's what they're truly saying. That's what it's truly saying. It's kind of forcing us as human beings to actually actively get involved in that process. Okay. I think it's interesting that when we have this meetup of Jupiter and Saturn, it's actually on the winter solstice, which is a significant point uh, in astrology, you know, as well as, you know, our world. It's on the 21st of December, 2020. And at this time, of course, we have the Sun at zero degrees of Capricorn. Now, it will be conjuncting Mercury as well. So I see this also as another time where we will have a lot of very, and nothing is retrograde here, uh, that's important. And I would say that this is also going to be another time this winter solstice that's going to be significant for all of us in terms of setting us up for the next um, three months or so before we hit the equinox, right? The spring uh, equinox later on in 2021. We have the moon conjuncting Neptune at this time in Pisces uh, and the moon sextiles Pluto. Uh, and then it goes on uh, to, se to uh, sextile both Jupiter and uh, Saturn. So I think that these things that it's relating to at this winter solstice is a beautiful thing at the end of the year um, that I think we can't even almost imagine right now but stay with the process of vibrating at a higher level and reach for doing the right thing, reach for doing what is noble, what has meaning for you in your life, and ask yourself, when I die, is this the legacy that I want to leave? Okay, I think I've kind of covered that to some extent. I'm going to put some notes in as well, because I did talk fairly quickly and gave you a lot of information. But I'm going to go on to next, the different ascendants. And you could read for your ascendant, as I said, but you could also uh, read for your um, Sun sign, if that's what you'd like to do too. Looking at both is always a good idea. You interpolate the messages from both and come up with what you feel makes sense to you. This is all about free will, guys. Let's start off with Capricorn. So Capricorn, obviously, this is in your first house, using whole house system. And the first house is obviously all about you, but this is not anything really new for you, Capricorn. Um, you've had a lot of things that you've had to process. I think process is the operating word for you that you've been doing uh, probably for a few years. This may be a culmination for you where you get the power and the inspiration to literally change your life forever. How awesome is that? Now, when Jupiter then goes to join up with Saturn, that'll be in your second house. So this will um, manifest in the end with the money that you make um, your value system could change as a result, um, and love, love could also change for you. Love and beauty are combined here together. When we look at Aquarius, this is your 12th house. I always see the 12th house as the house of rest, so it may be that's exactly what you've been doing um, over 2020, is catching up on rest. Um, but this is also a very spiritual house, right? This is ruled by Neptune and uh, occupies the sign of Pisces. So these are very high level, no boundaries type thinking. It could be that you uh, delve more into the spiritual realm, spiritual teachings. You could take up something like astrology um, or even shamanism, that type of thing as well. Pisces is certainly um, connected with the arts, uh, especially with music and that. And then when, when Jupiter goes on to go into Saturn, uh, conjunct with Saturn, it will then go into um, your first house. So this will then manifest as you setting up new structures uh, in your life that have more meaning for you, that uh, give you that sense of um, a higher self. So maybe some of these uh, spiritual things will become a meditation, pra a daily meditation practice that helps you uh, become your higher self. When we look at Pisces, that's going to be your 11th house. So the 11th house is, is certainly your hopes and dreams and wishes. Um, but it's also the friends that you're with and the groups that you're with. 
So this is the area that you've been transforming and uh, potentially changing um, during this 2020 and, and even before. Uh, but then it'll go into your 12th house. So this says that as a result of you making major changes uh, with regards to all the areas that I just mentioned, but especially your friends and the groups you belong to, you may enter into a period of real contemplation, right? Contemplation in the 12th house, as well as assimilation. So you may be taking in all the things that you got from these groups, uh, these new groups that you're with and friends, and assimilating and deciding how does this fit in from a spiritual standpoint um, and what does this, how does this add meaning to my life. For Aries it's your 10th house and 10th house is almost always exclusively just your career. So these are major changes that you've been going through in your career. And let me just tell you, you might be going through more than one change like this whole time period goes from April right the way through mid-November 2020. So you could change your job and then change your job again because it doesn't meet your needs. It doesn't mean something to you. So um, don't be surprised if that actually happens or that you do a major transformation of the job that you're in more than once. It transforms for you. Um, then that will go, then it'll go into your 11th house once Jupiter then goes on uh, to conjunct Saturn. So here you then set up your structures uh, as a result of changes in your career with regards to the friends that you have uh, and the groups that you're with. But I intuitively thought this was more your hopes and wishes. Although all these areas will be affected by the conjunction of um, Jupiter and Saturn uh, in your 12th house, I just think that you're going to change what your dreams are, what your hopes and wishes are, um, as a result of these major changes that you've made in your career and, and the long-term goals that you've made for yourself. For Taurus, it's your ninth house. And the ninth house, you know, is that higher level of thinking. That's why we refer many times to the ninth house as being higher learning. Um, but it's also foreign people, foreign things. Uh, it can be the law to some extent as well. So maybe you've been going through in one or all those areas some major transformations um, over from April right the way through November. But this is going to then lead you to setting up um, structures that are beneficial in the future for you in your 10th house of career. So um, I guess I'm encouraging everybody to know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And um, this is just us realizing that you know, sometimes we have to go through the fire to come out and get that pure essence of what we are. That's the process we're going through. It doesn't all have to be difficult though. Like I said, this could be magic time where you have things come in for you that you just can't believe that really were just something you thought of and wished for. All right. So that is Taurus. When we look at Gemini, Gemini it's your eighth house. And the eighth house is really your psychological self. It's also other people's money, it's taxes, it's inheritances, all those things could be, a, could be going through some major transformation in 2020. But this will result in you then having uh, structures set up that are beneficial for you in your ninth house. And the ninth house I've just spoken about when I talked about Taurus. But the ninth house here I see you, you may be dealing more with I think foreign people and foreign things. So maybe you're one of the um, healthcare providers, um, whether it's mental health, um, maybe even particular mental health, uh, as well as physical health, that you get involved with uh, foreign people and foreign organizations to set things up um, that will be for the betterment of mankind. Again, we're aiming at things that have meaning in life and that bring out our higher selves, right, at both these conjunctions. When we look at cancer, so Cancer, along with Capricorn, has been going through major transformation over the past few years. This, in many respects, for Capricorn and Cancer, is kind of culmination time, this 2020. Uh, but it's culmination time for all of us as a collective. But Saturn and Capricorn are certainly um, directly affected. So you have your seventh house, and the seventh house has been pounded for you guys, for sure. Seventh house is all about partnerships, and it really doesn't matter what partnership. It's typically looked at as your marriage, but this can also be your business partnerships. It can be both of them. It can be your therapist. It can be, um, it can be a government official, for that matter. 
Um, it could be um, your lawyer that you use as well. So these were all, this, these are areas that you're changing over this 2020. But then it will result in you setting up some new structures in your eighth house. So this could be typically you setting up structures that mean more to you with regards to maybe the, the savings that you have or the money that you put into investments. Maybe you decide that you're going to start um, or expand your business with a partnership or add more partnerships as part of the transformation that you were going through. And as a result of that, you have more investments from people that you can now put in your eighth house with that whole Jupiter-Saturn conjunction um, that can bring you in um, some really good things for you with regards to um, the partnerships that you have uh, just transformed. In Leo, it's your sixth house. Um, the sixth house uh, is a number of things too. I always look at it as the health house, but it can also be referred to as the um, the day-to-day -day work that we do, whatever the day-to-day -day work is that we do, whether it's an actual job, we may be retired, so it may be a hobby that you do. Uh, this area is transforming for you as well. Now, when we look at Leo just singly as a sign, this is a highly creative sign, Leo. And uh, you're meant to be on the stage, small stage or big stage, it doesn't matter, but you're meant to really be creative and to share that with the world. So that is added to the sixth house. So it may be that you've been creatively working on projects with regards to health, and you may be directly involved in this whole um, uh, evolution of resolving this virus problem, maybe even around the world. Um, but certainly your health, um, maybe in an, and as a result of that, maybe influencing the health of others in your day-to-day -day job. But this then can lead to with uh, Jupiter conjuncting se your seventh house. So this may lead to new partnerships, maybe new business partnerships. Maybe you'll meet the love of your life um, as a result of all the um, efforts that you've put through with regards to transforming your health, transforming maybe the health of others, um, and just the uh, intense work that you've done in your day-to-day -day job, whatever that might be. When we look at Virgo, it's your fifth house, and the fifth house is the creative house. Um, it's, it's you in 2020 having the confidence to express who you are, right? Having the confidence to express who you are. Maybe even going into creative arts that you have maybe always wanted to do and now I've been given opportunities. I mean, Pluto uh, with Jupiter can equal money too. Um, and certainly Pluto is power, so it could be powerful people come into your life and give you the license to use your creative power to move ahead. Well, as a result of that, uh, then around uh, the 21st of December, when we have this whole Jupiter conjuncting Saturn, it's going to be in your sixth house. So this is your day-to-day -day job as well as your health. So as a result of all this, your health may improve, right? Um, but you may also have new structures around your day-to-day -day job uh, that is reflected from this creative transformation that you've gone through. But I would say underlying all this, Virgo, is please feel confident about really expressing your, your true self, your authentic self, and to do that in a creative way. I feel that very strongly for you. All right, when we look at Libra, it's your fourth house. Fourth house is the home. And it's the home that you live in, the home that you're going to get, um, the home that you were born into. This, all this area, now can refer to your mother as well. Uh, because Cancer rules the fourth home and the moon rules um, Cancer, this uh, Libra could mean that your mother has been transforming as well. So, and this has affected your home. Could be both homes that are affected. Um, so it could be all three of these areas that come up over 2020 for you, where there's been major transformation um, that you've, you've had to work through that um, really push you and grow to uh, find meaning in life. But then this goes on to have uh, Jupiter conjunct Saturn and set some structures up in your fifth house. So this may have you being, being able to get involved in some kind of creative uh, self-expression. Um, or it may also be, like I spoke about earlier for Virgo, 
um, it, it may be you resulting in setting up structures around having fun. So it may be that you've been um, so involved with your mother, your home life, for whatever reasons during 2020, that you've not been able to have fun and, and have some creative outlets. This all comes about after you really expressing your higher level of self uh, through the whole uh, Jupiter-Pluto conjunction in 2020, where then you start having uh, some fun, or you literally set up structures in your life that, you know, give you opportunities to have some fun. And remember, these are cycles that we're talking about. These aren't just like uh, one month and that's it. Now, when we look at Scorpio, Scorpio is going to be your third house. And the third house is uh, commerce. It is um, anything to do with the advertising world. Uh, it is also our neighborhood. It's our siblings. Um, it's the way we communicate. So, in this area, this is what you've been going through, transforming all these areas and bringing them to this higher level of yourself um, and looking at it from more from the standpoint of, does this give me meaning to my life? And so you may have been going through many different iterations of improving how you communicate with others. Or you may have been literally setting up commercial ventures with regards to transforming other people, right? because certainly Scorpio can be involved in uh, transforming other people as well because they have such deep psychological insight into others, right? Scorpios have those x-ray eyes and they're able to see through things. But then this is going to lead um, to you setting up structures in your fourth house. I just see this as you being given the ability to actually maybe buy a home and set up a home, maybe even build your own home. Um, uh, your mother could become more important too. There may be certain things that um, you may be involving her with, with regards to your home, or she may become more important to you. Um, but I really get this feeling of, for Scorpios, that this is you setting up a new home for yourself. Or um, it could also be you setting up new structures, like adding on something to your home as well. But your mother could be involved with this too. Now the other thing, of course, when we talk about mothers and the moon, uh, all to do with the fourth house. We also have to remember that this can be our habits. So this could be a time of you as a result of seeing how you communicate and transforming all that, that you decide you have to change uh, and set up some new structures with regards uh, to your habits. That maybe things that you uh, picked up in childhood, uh, you decide to let those go and maybe even seek out um, someone who's older, Saturn can represent someone who's older, that can help you with that. All right, we're going to end up here with Sagittarius. That's my sun sign, by the way. Um, Sagittarius is your second house. So the second house uh, really rules the income that you earn, but it's also your value system. It's, it's love and beauty, too. So these are the areas that you've been transforming. So out at the forefront, um, I would expect that over 2020, you've been transforming or your money has been transforming that you earn uh, for good or for ill uh, over this 2020 period with this whole Jupiter-Pluto conjunction that has forced you to probably rethink. It might be tightening your belt, uh, but it also could be some fortunate thing. I mean, Pluto can represent people, of, uh, people and places of power coming in. And Jupiter can be good luck. So um, you could have had any of these things happen to you or could happen to you, depending when you're listening to this, throughout 2020. But then this is gonna lead to that whole Jupiter um, helping set up structures with Saturn to your third house. The third house I just spoke about, of course, is your communication style. Um, it's your neighborhood. It's your siblings. Um, it's all those types of things. So perhaps what you'll do is with some of the money that you earned, you could decide that you're going to invest it in some kind of commercial venture that you start setting, you get this lucky break. You know, Jupiter is a good luck planet. And as I mentioned earlier on in my video, uh, where Jupiter is, is where we're supposed to grow. And so for you, after it leaves this transformation for you um, and then starts in December in your third house, you're supposed to go out, grow with your communication style, but it may be you growing this commercial venture 
Um, that seems to hit me pretty strongly right now for you, Sagittarius. And of course, you being a Sagittarius, um, most Sagittarians are, are, have many languages, um, as well as traveled the world and lived around the world. Um, I've done a few of those things myself. Good luck, Sagittarius. All right, so I'm going to end this um, video just to say that this is going to be truly a hopeful time for us. We're going to be setting up a lot of structures that are going to really be beneficial to all of us. It just might take, you know, a little bit of time, patience. Um, there may be a little bit of sadness. But know that we're transforming. Remember this, transforming to a very high level. And sometimes transforming to a higher level can be a little bit painful. But just know on the other side, it's going to be so, so much better. All right. We still have Jupiter um, that's in the sky as well. But most notably, we still have Venus around. And Venus has been conjuncting the moon different times or being close to the moon, the crescent moon. And I'm talking now. Uh, still in March, towards the end of March. Um, but Jupiter pretty soon will be um, not so bright, so do get out there, or Venus is not going to be so bright, so please get out there and see it. I'm going to post the chart at the beginning of this video with the very last um, Jupiter-Pluto conjunction, the chart for that, and then at the end of this video I'm going to post the chart for the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. So you can kind of look at that or go back and forth uh, throughout the next few months and, and compare it to your chart because these degree points will uh, obviously be very important for you and your own personal chart. And as always we can chat back and forth um, on this um, um, underneath here uh, in the um, comment section. One other thing I wanted to talk about was this. Just to tie up this whole Jupiter-Pluto ending on the 12th of November, the last conjunction, I looked at the Sabian symbol, and it was really interesting. The Sabian symbol for, um, this would be 23 degrees of Capricorn, is a soldier receives two awards for bravery in combat. And wow, did that hit me. I don't think we're looking at combat as in war, but we're looking at it truly has been a war zone out there, and in some respects we are just starting having doing this video at the end of March. So I would say um, we're certainly l going to be seeing a lot of people being given awards for what they've done in terms of being very brave in this world to combat this very difficult time that has affected every single one of us in this world in some way. Now, of course, this takes me to the Nobel Prize and or prizes and of course that is um, it's right around I believe mid-December so there may be some very interesting Nobel Prize handed out this year for those who you know <laughs> been so brave all right guys take very good care of yourself try to stay inside but do get out and keep your distance. <laughs> Thinking of everybody. Lots of love.